Good morning. Today I'm looking again at a little bit from the story of the wise men's visit to Jesus. It's found in Matthew chapter 2. And I came to it because I was thinking about the beginning of John's Gospel when it says about Jesus coming to his own and his own rejecting him. That's in the first chapter of John's Gospel. And I was thinking, I think it's good sometimes when you read a story to try and imagine it happening, to imagine in your mind's eye, have a little sort of daydream if you like, travel with those amazing people who had travelled hundreds of miles, travelled for the best part of two years, following this star, and they arrive in Jerusalem, and they make inquiries at the king's palace, the palace of King Herod the Great, who was a very evil king. He killed most of his family in order to secure his um, his kingdom because, well, he just was that kind of man. Um, and they went to Jerusalem because Jerusalem and Bethlehem are very close together geographically and they made the assumption as they got closer to where the star was stationary, they thought, well, this is a king we're looking for. Where would we find a king? And, and the obvious place is in the palace. And so they go to the palace and you imagine them coming to the palace and the inquiry comes to the king. There are, there are these very strange people outside. Um, they, there's a huge entourage. They would have travelled with quite a lot of servants and animals. And they had, well, I don't think he knew about the gifts that they were carrying. But uh, they were very fine, well, well-educated foreign people who had come to his palace. And it says... The message they gave to the king in verse 2 of chapter 2 of Matthew. Where is he who's been born king of the Jews? For we've seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. So the Herod's response to this was, the king of the Jews, well, if there's, is this, is, is this the Messiah? Is this the promised king? He knew he wasn't actually a Jew himself. Um, he was an Edomite. Um, and that was one of the reasons why he felt so threatened by the Jews. But if there was a king who had been born to be king of the Jews, he might be preferred by the people to King Herod. So he gathers, he gathers all the chief priests and scribes of the people and inquires of them whether Christ was to be born. So he gathers all the, all the chief priests and scribes, all the, all the great spiritual authorities. It would be the equivalent of someone going to London, to Buckingham Palace, and asking King Charles, uh, we've been told there's a new king born, and we've come to find him. And King Charles gathering together the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Archbishop of York, all the great religious leaders of various religions, you know, does anyone know anything about this? And they, these great people, the chief priests and the scribes, said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what is written by the prophet. Now this is the prophet Micah, in Micah 5.2. Micah prophesied, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. So here is the promise. The promise is he's going to be born in Bethlehem. So King Herod goes back to these wise men, these strangers, and says, well, the Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament, he wouldn't have called it the Old Testament because they hadn't got the New Testament then, but the, the Scriptures, the Hebrew Scriptures, prophesy that he'll be born in Bethlehem. So that's where you want to go and find him. Now, this is all very familiar. So they go off to find him. 
Now the puzzle that came to me was, here are the chief priests, here are the people who know their Bibles, who know their scriptures. They know where, G where the prophesied Messiah is going to be born. Why aren't they hurrying with the wise men to find the baby? They've been waiting for hundreds of years for the great king, the great descendant of David to come. And wouldn't, I mean, I can't understand why they didn't say, uh, please, uh, 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 King Herod, can we go with them? Can we see if this is true? Can we? S These people have travelled hundreds of miles to find this baby, to find this new king born. We must find him. We, we, the whole, the whole of, of the Jewish nation had been waiting for this one who was to come. And yet these great spiritual leaders, even though they identified where he would be born, did nothing to find him. They did, it, they were unmoved. And it's a puzzle throughout the New Testament as to why those people who would know the most about who the Messiah was and what he was going to do and what he was going to be like. They were the ones who rejected the great things that Jesus did. It's a surprise to me to think that they did this. And it is a surprise to us, I'm sure, that people who in every other way are good and kind and upright, when you present the challenge of Jesus to them, they actually don't just don't want to know. And it's it's a surprise. And of course, Luke tells us that when Jesus was 12, he went to Jerusalem. So 12 years, well, he was about two at this point um, when the Magi came to Jerusalem. So 10 years later, these same chief priests and scribes would have been in the temple when Jesus came as a 12-year-old boy and sat in the temple talking with them. I wonder if many of them were the same people. And again, they had the challenge. Will you, will you listen to this, this one that has come? Ponder it, my friends. This prophecy came true perfectly in the city of Judah, where the descendants of David gathered for that census, Jesus had been born. And wouldn't you think that just the mere fulfilment of the prophecy was enough proof to them that God had begun his salvation work? And yet, they didn't respond to it. They were unmoved. My time is up. I must stop. But it's, an, it's one of the great ways to get to know the scriptures is to ask questions. Why did people respond the way that they did? because the light had come and they were in darkness. They didn't want to respond to the light. And my time is up. Enough thinking for today. Let's ponder again the wonder of fulfilled scripture in the life of Jesus. See you tomorrow, I hope. Bye-bye. <laughs>